Thank you, Karin. Yeah, and just to clarify, actually, besides working with the Eurasian Harvard Action Association, uh, you know, which is based in Lithuania, I'm for almost 10 years working with uh, uh, this great organization, Andrei Rilko Foundation for Health and Social Justice, which is based in uh, Russia, in Moscow, and I'm I myself from Russia and live in Moscow. Uh, that's why I will present like uh, about our experience here today. Uh, so just to start, like to give you under the uh, some information about uh, the organization I'm from, uh, our Andrei Rilko Foundation uh, for Health and Social Justice. It's like a small community-based, local, Moscow-based organization, uh, which is, was established uh, almost 10 years ago in 2009 with a mission to promote uh, and develop human drug-based, uh, human drug policies based on tolerance, uh, uh, protection of health, dignity, and human rights. And our main spheres of activities, it's like the uh, provision of direct harm reduction services on the streets of Mos Moscow to people who use drugs. Uh, also, the drug policy related advocacy with a particular focus on, on the introduction of the uh, OST treatment in Russia. Um, drug policy and human rights focused watchdogging and capacity building of people uh, of the communities uh, of people who use drugs. Uh, there will be some photos of our work in my presentation. Um, so uh, now just to remind you about the HIV, uh, about the situation with HIV epidemic in Russia, I like to give you the context we work in. So the region of Eastern Europe and Central Asia, it's the only region in the world where uh, the HIV epidemic continues to grow, unfortunately, and uh, according to UNAIDS Russia, in fact, it's the driving force of the HIV epidemic in the region because, for example, in 2016, it was uh, responsible for 81% uh, of new cases in the region being registered. And for several years, uh, we have a concentrated epidemic among key populations, such as people who use drugs, men uh, who have sex with men, and sex workers. And also, we have a generalized epidemic in some parts of the country, in some uh, sub-regions. Uh, and uh, still, the main driver, like still like 70 percent of uh, all new HIV cases in Russia are associated with the use of the inject uh, injection drugs. Uh, and still, like the main way of of HIV transmission is parenteral. And uh, actually, uh, we have more than 1,220,000 uh, cases being officially registered as on the end of 2017. Uh, of HIV infection, but only 35% of those people living with HIV have access to treatment. Uh, so, uh, having such situation with like HIV epidemic in, uh, in country, uh, unfortunately, the Russian government does not really support the implementation of HIV prevention programs among key affected populations on the federal level. And uh, also, the last global fund HIV grant uh, came to an end uh, at the end of the last year, and not sure if like we uh, ever will receive uh, new support from the global fund so uh, actually not much funding is available for ngos working in country uh, um, uh, doing the uh, hiv prevention work among uh, key populations and um, Actually, those NGOs which are still working, they're working, uh, they're operating the hostile environment of the uh, foreign agent law. Uh, this law was introduced uh, in 2012, uh, and uh, since then, all uh, NGOs which receive foreign funding and um, uh, which uh, implement political activities, uh, they should be registered as a foreign agent. And just like uh, in uh, Russia, in, uh, with its Soviet Union background, to be labeled as a foreign agent is the same like being labeled as a traitor, officially and publicly. And um, needless to say that this definition of political activity uh, could be uh, interpreted and is interpreted very broad. Uh, so, uh, after the uh, law was introduced, more than uh, 1,000 uh, NGOs, they uh, underwent an unexpected uh, inspections by prosecution office in 2013. A few of them were like uh, labeled as foreign agents, uh, a few of them were closed. Uh, in June 2014, the uh, Minister of Justice got the right to declare itself, to, to decide itself which NGOs should be put on the list of foreign agents. and also. 
the recommendation was issued for all governmental structures not to, to avoid dealing with those NGOs which be, were put on the list of foreign agents. Uh, starting from 2016, actually, we uh, see the tendency uh, for NGOs working in the sphere of HIV AIDS prevention uh, to being put more oftenly uh, into this list. Uh, so out of 76 NGOs uh, which were put on the list of foreign agents, uh, 10 of them are those working uh, in the field of HIV AIDS prevention in Russia and the last one was uh, Timur Islamov Foundation from uh, Tatarstan from Kazan was uh, included into the list just two weeks ago. Uh, yes. So my organization was officially uh, labeled by the Minister of Justice for the foreign agent uh, in June 2016, two years ago, and the political activities which was incriminated to our organization was actually the advocacy for introduction of obvious substitution, uh, substitution treatment in Russia. Uh, this is official, we have like the documents where it's written. And um, just for you to understand that the law works in such a way that like uh, NGOs, they should register themselves as a foreign agent. So we need to kind of go and confess that we are the foreign agent. If we don't do this, and if it's the Minister of Justice who put us onto the list, it means that like uh, such NGOs be, uh, who, who was not registered by themselves but was put on the list by the Minister of Justice, they are automatically uh, being considered as uh, the administrative offender. And uh, they need to be fined, uh, they, they are fined in the amount equivalent to 5,000 US dollars, which for NGOs like is a substantial amount of money. So the, 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 this is what happened to, to us. Uh, we were put on the list of the foreign agents by the Minister of Justice, and they tried to fine us. Uh, in August 2016, we went to the court, and after two consecutive trials uh, to the court against the Minister of Justice, after two consecutive trials, the court has dismissed the case. Uh, of an admis uh, administrative offense, and we were not uh, fined. Uh, and this was the, for the first time in law enforcement practice in Russia um, on foreign agent law. Uh, also, as we don't consider ourselves as a foreign agent and we don't we disagree with the decision of the Minister of uh, Justice uh, to put us on this list, so we also tried to challenge uh, this decision in the court as well. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, in 2017, um, uh, we lost both the district court and the Moscow city court, and they uh, refused to meet our claims, and uh, they left uh, the foundation uh, with the status of the foreign agent. So now, uh, the, today, we're heading to the European Court on Human Rights with this case. Uh, so just to, to conclude, um, Yes, like we do carry uh, uh, out our work using the foreign funding, but it's not because like it's the way we only way we want to do this. We applied for the governmental funding uh, in last few years, like at least for four times, but our applications were never supported. And like I'm working now on the one more application, which I'm sure that which uh, will not be supported as well. Uh, so it's not like us who don't want to receive governmental funding and work like on the governmental money. It's the, it's the government who doesn't want to support our activities in Russia. Uh, and um, uh, unfortunately, for a long time, HIV prevention among key affected population is not being funded uh, from the public funds in Russia, and it seems nothing will change in the nearest future uh, because, for example, uh, uh, as the new HIV strategy uh, um, till 2020, which was adopted in 2016, it doesn't support harm reduction services at all. Um, and uh, actually, till now, uh, this status of foreign agent didn't really affect our work. So uh, we continue to receive foreign funding and uh, provide harm reduction services for people who use drugs on the streets of Moscow. Uh, but uh, we are constantly, because of this uh, status, we are constantly under a threat of being fined for any minor violation of uh, the foreign agent law. And uh, they can find us as many times as they want, and the, actually this could lead to the closure of the organization. And uh, you should understand that this law, it's like, it's like a hammer hanging on you, and you never know when it will fall down on you. And this law is it's like, it's just an instrument of the control of, uh, by the government of the independent NGOs, uh, which 
could be applied at any moment. And it's really said that NGOs uh, providing HIV prevention services to key affected populations in Russia are being considered as a threat by the government, uh, especially taking into account uh, the situation with HIV epidemic in country, uh, which continues to escalate. Uh, Thank you, and uh, please join our campaign, which probably you see, uh, Chase uh, Virus Not People.